everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So it's time to talk about the books that are coming out in May. And there are so many books coming out this month that I think sound really exciting. I think I counted something like 36 books that I have on my list that come out this month. Some of these are ones that I'm not quite sure about. So I think today I'll be talking to you about the 23 books that I'm most excited about coming out this month. And then in the description below, I'll also leave the other books that I'm considering reading. So before we get started, leave a book emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. Like always, we'll move our way through the month and we have a handful of books coming out May 4th. So the first one I will talk about is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So this is an adult sci-fi thriller. We have our main character who is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. And if he fails, humanity and the earth itself will perish. Except that right now he doesn't know that. <laughs> he can't even remember his own name let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time, and he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles away from home with nothing but two corpses for company. His crewmate's dead, his memories fuzzily returning, he realizes that an impossible task now confronts him. Hurtling through space on this tiny ship, it's up to him to puzzle out this impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction level threat to our species. And with the clock ticking down and the nearest human being light years away, he's got to do it all alone. Or does he? So I'm just so excited about this book. I really, really loved The Martian. I think he does a really great job of creating some very tense moments and like The Martian was just so fast paced and so interesting to me and I liked all the scientific details that we get and I feel like this is going to be a similar sort of tone. What happened to his crewmates? What is going on with the earth? What is it that he has been sent to do? Why does he not remember these things? There's so many questions that I definitely want answered and I'm just so excited about this. I've heard it does have more of the scientific tone, I think, which is very exciting for me. Uh, it's something I'm definitely interested in. And, you know, I think with The Martian, he did a really good job of making it accessible to like non-scientific people. The Martian also had a pretty humorous tone and I'm really excited to see if this one has a similar sort of feel. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 4th is Cursed Luck by Kelly Armstrong. So this is an adult urban fantasy, and we follow Kennedy Bennett, who comes from a long line of curse weavers. For centuries, her family has, I guess, been doing this, this trade in Massachusetts in this unconventional small town that's welcomed paranormal practitioners since the dawn of spiritualism. She's recently struck out on her own, opening an antique shop in Boston where her specialty is uncursing and reselling hexed objects. But then Aiden Connolly walks into her life with an offer she really should refuse. The scion of a f wealthy family of luck workers, he has a scheme to get his hands on the most famous cursed object of all, the mythical Necklace of Harmonia. He's not the only one after this, though, and he's not the only one looking for a cursed weaver to fix it. Her sisters are kidnapped, and she finds herself plunged into the underbelly of the magical world where even Aiden is in over his head. So this is another one I know I'm going to buy. I love Kelly Armstrong's books so much and you know I am very excited. I hope this is a start to a new urban fantasy series because that would be awesome. Even if it's a standalone, you know, that's fine. I will definitely be getting it. <laughs> I think her writing is really engaging. I am very intrigued by this whole curse weaving situation and you know being able to uncurse these hex objects i think that could be interesting and you know what is going on with this necklace i don't know but i definitely want to find out so i'm just ridiculously excited for this book like give me all the kelly Armstrong books the next book i'll talk about that comes out may 4th is ariadne by jennifer saint so this is a retelling of Greek mythology. So basically we follow Ariadne who is the princess of Crete and she grows up greeting the dawn from her beautiful dancing floor and listening to her nursemaid's stories of gods and heroes. But beneath her golden palace echo the ever-present hoofbeats of her brother the Minotaur, a monster who demands blood sacrifice. When Theseus, the prince of Athens, arrives to vanquish the beast, she sees in his green eyes not a threat but an escape. To find the gods betraying her family and country and risking everything for love, she helps Theseus kill the Minotaur. Will her decision ensure her happy ending? And what of Phaedra, the beloved younger sister, she leaves behind? The retelling of Greek mythology and mentions that it's like a debut novel for fans of Circe by Madeline Miller. So I feel very excited about this. I, again, just love anything dealing with mythology or retellings and I think I haven't really seen that much with Ariadne and the Minotaur, so I'm very excited to see what Jennifer Saint does here. This is going to focus on the women in Greek mythology, which is really exciting. Ariadne could be pretty misunderstood, so I'm very curious to just kind of do a deep dive into like her feelings and just everything about this particular story. 
The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 4th is The Siren by Catherine St. John. So this is an adult thriller. We're in, you know, the, the hot summertime and some of Hollywood's most notorious faces are assembled on this Caribbean island to film The Siren, starring dangerously handsome megastar Cole Power playing opposite his ex-wife Stella Rivers. The surefire blockbuster promises to entice audiences with its sultry storyline and intimately connected cast. Three very different women arrive on set, each with her own motive. We have Stella, an infamously unstable actress who is struggling to reclaim the career she lost in the wake of multiple very public breakdowns. We have Taylor, a fledgling, fledgling producer who is anxious to work on a film she hopes will turn her career around after her last job ended in scandal. And then we have Felicity, who is Stella's mysterious new assistant who harbors designs of her own that threaten to upend everyone's plans. So we've got a, a hurricane brewing offshore, and so each woman finds herself trapped on the island, united against a common enemy. But as deceptions come to light, misplaced trust may prove more perilous than the storm itself. So I think that sounds really exciting. I do actually have Catherine St. John's other book, The Lion's Den, which I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to. And let's just take a moment to admire, like, both of these covers are very bright and just, like, so eye-catching. Really love that. But anyway, with this particular one, I'm very excited that we have, you know, we're on an island and we've got this hurricane coming in, so I feel like it's going to be sort of this isolated closed circle. I don't know if it's necessarily a murder mystery, but an isolated closed circle type of feel. And, you know, I think that makes, again, makes things really tense because you can't really go anywhere. So you're definitely trapped with a bunch of people who may or may not be good. It sounds like we're going to have a lot of tense character dynamics. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 4th is Firebreak by Nicole Connor Stace. So I have actually already read this and I will leave linked down below the video in which I review it, but I absolutely loved this. I gave it five stars. So this is an adult sci-fi book and essentially we're kind of in this post-apocalyptic type setting after this corporate war where things like power and water are pr pretty highly regulated. So we follow a VR gamer as she plays the, this VR game and catches a glimpse of these spec ops operatives, but discovers a conspiracy that this corporation may have essentially like abducted kids and turned them into super soldiers. So I really loved this. I think it has a lot of really great elements. You know, not only do we have this VR game, but it's like goes into this deep dive about human rights. I think with these corporations, you can definitely tell that there are some shady things happening and it's really fun to just learn more about that. And I highly recommend this book. Again, I will leave my video review of it linked down below so you can check it out more. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 4th is The Shadow in the Glass by J.J. Harwood. So this is an adult retelling of Cinderella. So I think this is like a gothic feel with this Victorian backdrop. Once upon a time, Ella had wished for more than her life as a lowly maid. Now forced to work hard under the unforgiving, lecherous gaze of the man she once called Stepfather, Ella's only refuge is in the books she reads by candlelight that are hidden away in this library she's not permitted to enter. One night among her beloved books of far-off lands, her wishes are answered. At the stroke of midnight, a fairy godmother makes her an offer that will change her life. Seven wishes hers to make as she pleases. Each wish comes at a price, though, and Ella must decide whether it's one she's willing to pay. So I am extremely excited about this. Again, I absolutely love retellings and I really like that this has a gothic setting. Like gothic horror is something that works really well for me. And it seems, you know, it, it, it does mention here that it's perfect for fans of Laura Purcell. And I have, I've read, I guess only just one of her books, but it's like this gothic horror type of feel. It was done really well, super exciting. So I feel like this is going to be a fun, dark take on Cinderella. I also really enjoy when magic comes at a price. And so, you know, obviously we have our wishes coming at a price and I definitely want to know one, what her wishes are to what that price is. So I am super excited about this. I think it has a lot of promise. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 4th is The Block by Ben Oliver. So this is the sequel to The Loop, which came out, I think last year. This is a like YA <laughs> dark sci-fi book and in the loop you essentially have this like futuristic death row prison for teens and have the option to push back their execution date by six months if they opt into these delays which are essentially like scientific and medical experiments for the uh, elite in the outside world and there's basically some like very strange things that start happening which is really tense I liked it a lot we have learned the truth about what the inmates are being used for and basically it's like really vital that our main character builds an army and escapes. He's in the block and 
basically has to toggle between enduring an energy harvest for 12 hours of the day and surviving complete immobilization. And I guess the only semblance of relief is this sane zone, which is obviously created to keep prisoners from going completely mad. And they are in this virtual reality and live out their fantasies of life outside. But for Luca, it's different. He's trying to like not descend into madness and try to keep his friend's location safe. And reality is becoming more scrambled on the outside and there's just some, some really high stakes here. So I'm really excited about this. With The Loop, it was definitely a dark story and I it was super fast paced. I didn't expect the direction it went. It had some excellent creepy moments. So this is definitely a series that I want to continue. Okay, so now we'll move to May 11th, and the first book I'll talk about here is Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. So this seems to be more of an adult urban fantasy, and we have our main character who starts hearing a voice in her head and basically is like, okay, well this is just stress. She's essentially broke and jobless, so she moves back to Malaysia with her parents, which is, I guess, the country she last saw when she was a toddler. She learns that this new voice is not actually hers, it's the ghost of her estranged grandmother. Her grandmother was a spirit medium, an avatar of a mysterious deity called the Blackwater Sister. Now she's determined to settle a score against a business magnet who has offended the god, and she's decided that Jess, our main character, is going to help her do it whether she wants to or not. So she's drawn into a world of gods, ghosts, and family secrets, and finds that making deals with capricious spirits is a dangerous business, but dealing with her grandmother is just as complicated. Especially when grandmother, you know, tries to spy on her personal life, threatens to spill her secrets to the family, and uses her body to commit felonies. As she fights for retribution for her grandmother, she also needs to regain control of her body and destiny, or the Blackwater sister may finish her off for good. So that sounds really exciting. Again, I always love urban fantasy, and I don't think I've really met, read anything that takes place in Malaysia or is inspired by, you know, Malaysian elements. So this sounds super cool to me. I think it'll be really nice to get an idea of mythology in this setting. I think Grandma may not be so nice here. Certainly, like, using Jess's body to commit felonies is, is probably not great. But, you know, I'm very curious to see what's going on with this revenge quest. I'm curious to see if Jess will go along with it or fight back. I don't know, but I think this sounds like a really cool, unique urban fantasy, and I definitely want to check it out. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 11th is A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. So I am actually currently reading an arc of this, and I'm very excited. So I think I would describe this as more of like a historical urban fantasy type of setting, but essentially we're in Cairo in 1912, and so our main character is the youngest woman working for the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities, and she's, you know, not a rookie, especially after essentially like preventing the destruction of the universe. <laughs> when someone murders a secret brotherhood dedicated to one of the most famous men in history, she's called onto the case, and you know, this this guy has transformed the world 40 years ago when he opened up the veil between the magical and mundane realms before vanishing into the unknown. So the murderer claims to be this, this guy returned to condemn the modern age for its social oppressions. His dangerous magical abilities instigate unrest in the streets of Cairo that threaten to spill over into the global stage. And so um, alongside her ministry colleagues and a familiar person from our past, our agent must unravel the mystery behind this imposter to restore peace to the city or face the possibility that he could be exactly who he seems. So I am really enjoying this so far. I've actually done like a little bit of a binge read of this series with the short stories and novellas that come before this book. It's a really cool world so far. I'm intrigued by the different magical elements that we have, especially, you know, we've got these djinn, but we also have these like mechanical angels that are very cool and also kind of ominous. So I definitely want to know more about that. I really like our main character, Fatma. We got to see her in a dead djinn in Cairo, which I really enjoyed. We also have some like Egyptian mythology coming in and it's just it's just a really cool world. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 11th is We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinsker. So this is an adult sci-fi book. We have Val and Julie who just want what's best for their kids. So when their teenage son David comes home one day asking for a pilot, which is this new brain implant to help with school, so they're like, okay, yeah, I guess I guess we'll, you know, reluctantly agree to this because it is the future after all. Julie ends up feeling this mounting pressure at work to get a pilot to keep pace with her colleagues, leaving Val and Sophie, the, the, one of the other kids, part of this shrinking minority of people without this device. Before long, the implications are clear for the family and society. You either get a pilot or get left behind. 
with government subsidies and no downside, why would anyone refuse? And how would you stop a technology once it's everywhere? Those are the questions Sophie and her anti-pilot movement rise up to answer, even if it puts them against the pilot's powerful manufacturer and pits Sophie against the people she loves most. So this sounds really intriguing. I kind of have a suspicion that these pilots may not be what they seem and perhaps have a darker side to them. This seems like it'll be a more character-driven story. I think this will be like pretty deeply exploring just like this particular technology and like the pros and cons of this and like a possible future of what would happen if you know everybody were to adopt this particular tech. And I feel like that's kind of you know relevant as to today with you know just various technology and like parents trying to decide what to give to their kids. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 11th is Angel of the Overpass by Shauna McGuire. So I am so excited for this. This is the third book in the Ghost Rose series and this is an adult urban fantasy. We follow Rose who is a ghost and she died when she was 16 and on her way to her high school prom. She hasn't been resting easy since then because Bobby Cross, the man who killed her, essentially got away clean after running her off the road. And she's not the kind of girl who can let something like that slide. So she's been looking for a way to stop him ever since they put her body in the ground. However, things have changed in the Twilight world with the spirits of the restless dead continue their lives. The crossroads have been destroyed and Bobby's protections are gone. So for the first time, it may be possible for Rose to defeat him. Not alone, though, she's going to have to get you know, every friend she's managed to make and call in every favor she's managed to add to her account if she wants to stand a chance. And this may be her last chance to be avenged since what is Bobby Cross without the crossroads? Everything Rose knows is about to change. So I'm so excited for this. I've really enjoyed this and this does actually tie in with Shauna McGuire's Encrypted series, which I also love. Definitely recommend that, you know, fun urban fantasy series. But I really like the idea of the crossroads. Like, I mean, obviously things have, are a little bit different now, but you know, with the crossroads, it's like, be careful of the bargains that you make. So I'm just really curious to see just how the crossroads going away will really affect our, our ghost community. I've really enjoyed Rose and, you know, her struggle against Bobby Cross has been particularly motivating. Bobby Cross is, is not, not a good dude, shall we say. Can't wait for it. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 11th is Son of the Storm by Sui Davies Okumbo. So this is an adult fantasy. And I'm so excited for this. This is a set in a world inspired by the pre-colonial empires of West Africa. In this ancient city, our main character, Danzo, is a clever scholar on the cusp of achieving greatness. Only he doesn't want it. Instead, he prefers to chase forbidden stories about what lies outside the city walls. The elite claim that there's nothing of interest, and the city's immigrants are sworn to secrecy. But when he stumbles across a warrior wielding mag magic that shouldn't exist, he's put on a collision course with like the city's darkest secrets. Drawn into the hidden history of the city, he sets out on a journey beyond its borders. Chaos left in the wake of his discovery threatens to destroy the empire. So, you know, uh, we've got some, some high, high stakes here. So this seems like a really cool, diverse fantasy. I am definitely excited to, you know, have this world inspired by like this, this West African setting. So there's some mentions of a vibrant tale of betrayal, intrigue, and revolution. So that sounds cool. I definitely want to know what is outside those city walls. Tell me. <laughs> I think our main character sounds pretty interesting. It's nice that we've got this clever scholar. I'm curious to see just where his journey leads. Also, just like, what is this magic that shouldn't exist? I don't know, but I definitely want to find out. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 11th is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. So this is an adult romance. We have Poppy and Alex who have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. She has insatiable wonderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. Relatable. <laughs> but somehow, ever since a faithful car share home from college many years ago, they're the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live apart. She's in New York City and he's in their small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until, oh dear, two years ago when they ruined everything and haven't spoken since. Puppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. And when someone asks when the last time she was truly happy, she knows without a doubt it was on that last final trip with Alex. It shows she's trying to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together, lay everything on the table, make it all right, and he agrees. So she has a week to fix everything. If only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship. 
what could possibly go wrong? So I'm very excited about this. I loved Beach Read by Emily Henry. It was one of my favorite romances of last year. And I definitely want to check this out. I like that this has this like summer vacation aspect. I think this will be perfect to read in you know preparation for some summer vacation. It sounds like our characters have different personality traits, but they like work really well together. So I think that'll be a really nice balance. You know, with Beach Read, certainly there were some more serious topics, and so I'm curious to see if this will kind of have the same sort of tone where it's like, oh, hey, there are actually some like deep things that we need to talk about. So I really liked how it works in Beach Read, and you know, if it, if it is included here, I feel pretty confident that Emily Henry will do a good job exploring those topics. So I definitely can't wait for this. Okay, so now we'll move to May 18th, and the first book I'll talk about here is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. So this is another adult romance, and we have our single mom, mom Jessica, who is a data and statistics wizard, but no amount of number crunching can convince her to step back into the dating world. Raised by her grandparents, who now help raise her seven-year-old daughter, she's been left behind too often to really feel comfortable letting anyone in. After all, her father was never around, her hard partying mother disappeared when she was six, and her ex decided that he wasn't father material before her daughter was even born. She holds her loved ones close, but working constantly to stay afloat is hard and lonely. So she hears about Genetic Ally, which is this buzzy new DNA-based matching company that's predicted to change dating forever. And so she's like, okay, yeah, I totally understand this. You know, we're finding it through DNA. We're using numbers to do this. I can get on board. At least until her test shows an unheard of 98% compatibility with one of Genetic Ally's founders. But she already knows this guy, and she thinks that he's stuck up and stubborn and basically like, no, I'm not, he's not my cellmate. So Genetic Ally has this proposition that, you know, get to know him and we'll pay you. So Jess, who is kind of struggling to make ends meet, is like, all right, I guess I'll do this. So they're dragged from one event to the next as the diamond match that could launch Genetic Ally's valuation sky high. And so she's starting to realize there could be more to the scientist and the science behind his soulmate than she thought. So I actually did win a giveaway, a Goodreads giveaway of an arc of this, and I'm really excited to get to it. I think Christina Loren's writing is really fun for me. I've really enjoyed the books that I've read of theirs so far. There's a lot of like really fun humor and snark and just like really enjoyable characters and just funny moments that happen. I also really like that Jessica is into data and statistics. Being a PhD biostatistics person myself, like I'm on board with this. Give me somebody who is relatable. I'm so excited for this. Like I can't even begin to describe how cool that is. I like that this is like a DNA based matchmaking company. I think that will be a really interesting idea to explore. And it does seem more like we're going to have a bit of an enemies to lovers type romance, which is something that I really enjoy. So I am super excited for this one. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 18th is Dark One Volume 1 by Brandon Sanderson. This is a graphic novel. We have Paul, who is a young man haunted by visions of a dark and fantastic world. Visions he initially believes are hallucinations. But when he discovers their prophecies from Mirandus, a world in which he's destined to become a fearsome destroyer, he'll have to embrace the fear, rise up as the Dark One, and shatter everything. So it says it examines the dual roles we often take in life, the ability to be a savior as well as the destroyer. So obviously I love Brandon Sanderson and I am really intrigued by this premise, like following a guy who is destined to become a villain, I assume, like that sounds cool. Brandon Sanderson has some really interesting worlds and I'm very curious to see what this one is all about. And I'm also just, you know, like I, I did recently buy White Sand Volume 1, but so I have not read it yet, but I'm also just curious to see how Brandon Sanderson's writing translates to graphic novels, but I feel pretty optimistic about this one. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 18th is Day Zeros by C. Robert Cargill. So I actually also read an arc of this a few weeks ago and really loved it. It was a five-star book for me, so I'll leave that video linked down below. It was the same video that I talked about Firebreak, but this is an adult sci-fi and it's the prequel to Sea of Rest and we have this robot uprising. So we follow Pounce, who is this tiger AI, as he essentially has to decide whether he wants to join the robots or protect his eight-year-old charge. I really loved this. It was so full of action. It was very exciting. It reminded me a lot of like a robot Calvin and Hobbes dynamic, so that was something I was already on board with. There's a lot of interesting internal debates about like free will versus what you're programmed to do, and I liked that we have a lot of this like exploration of artificial intelligence and like what it means to be human. So I just had a fabulous time with this. Again, I'll leave that video review link down below so you can check that out, but I highly recommend this one. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 18th is The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. So this is an adult romance. 
what if you could be someone else just for the summer? So Birdie has made a mistake. Everyone imagines running away from their life at some point, but she's actually done it. So the life she's run into is her best friend Heather's. The only problem is she hasn't told Heather. So the summer job at the Highland Scottish Hotel that her world-class wine expert friend Dish turns out to be a lot more than Birdie bargained for. Can she survive a summer pretending to be her best friend? And can she stop herself from falling for the first man she's ever actually liked, but who thinks she's someone else? So one good, good friend's very bad decision is at the heart of this laugh out loud love story and unexpected tale of a woman finally finding herself in the strangest of places. So this sounds pretty entertaining. I like that we've got this, you know, Highland Scottish Hotel. I think that setting is going to be really awesome. That's definitely like a big draw for me. It kind of seems like Birdie's life is a bit of a mess. And certainly I, I hope that she can turn her life around. But I think this will provide a lot of like really interesting like getting to know yourself and like come to terms with the things that you've done and choices that you've made. So I think that should provide a lot of really interesting exploration. I'm curious to see what Heather thinks about this once she learns about what Birdie has done. I think there could be some fun hijinks with Birdie. I don't know how much of a wine expert she is, but I feel like that could lead into some pretty entertaining situations. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 18th is The Broken God by Gareth Hanrahan. So this is the third book in the Black Iron Legacy. Now I've read the first one, The Gutter Prayer, which is up there. I have not read the second one, but I do own it. I'm like fairly confident that I'm going to also love it as much as I loved, you know, The, the Gutter Prayer. It was such a cool, like dark fantasy with a lot of really, really cool elements. Like I cannot emphasize that enough. It was so cool. So we've got this God's War that has come to the city and has divided it between three occupying powers got a fragile armistice that's holding back the gods, but other dangerous forces seek to exert their influence. We've got one character who has, was once the heir to the Brotherhood of Thieves, who's been transformed into the living stone of the new city, but his powers are failing and the criminal dragons are circling. But then far across the sea, we have another character who was once a thief, a saint, a god killer, now alone and powerless, and seeks the mysterious land of Kibesh, desperate to find a cure for this other character. But what hope does she have when even the gods seek vengeance against her? So, like, I really need to get my act together and read The Shadow Saint, but, you know, perhaps I, you know, I've got time to do that before this one comes out, so I'm very excited for that. At least with The Gutter Prayer, it was definitely a darker fantasy, but it had a lot of really unique ideas, and it felt so original. I think we've got some cool horror elements, like, especially with some of the, the creatures in this world. Oh boy, yes, definitely a series that I have been meaning to continue with, and I think this one it sounds like our the stakes are definitely increasing a lot and I can't wait to find out what happens next. So now we'll move to May 25th and the first book I'll talk about here is The Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. So this is an adult fantasy. So we have a gifted thief who has flourished from her days as a street kid pilfering wallets to survive. Now she's thriving, stealing jewels from the rich under the involuntary employ of New York City's most notorious crime plot boss. But when an enigmatic woman secures her services at Sword Point, she's plunged into a startling realm of opposing thrones, warring elven and elemental magic she cannot begin to fathom. So her quest is straightforward, steal a stone from the Sacred Garden without anyone discovering her true identity, which would earn her certain death. But the identity she has assumed is that of a captured princess, an enemy to, I guess, this country where the Sacred Garden is, after she poisoned their beloved king and queen on the day she was supposed to marry the prince. Her betrothed, who is the newly crowned king, detests her with every grain of his handsome being. Fortunately for our main character, she's more valuable to him alive than dead. So he gives her the choice, life in a cell or an acquittal of all charges in exchange for her help exposing the growing plot against him. She sees no other option and embraces this tricky role of the smitten queen-to-be until she can escape, which is a ruse that brings her far closer to the king than she anticipated and threatens more than her safety. As she digs deeper into this sacred garden and this ancient feud between the countries, she discovers monstrous truths that can spell ruin for all. So this is awesome. I am so excited for this. So I've read The Simple Wild and Wild Heart by K.A. Tucker, and those are more, you know, adult romance. I really loved them. I'm so excited to see K.A. Tucker doing a fantasy. This is awesome. So it sounds like we have some portal fantasy elements, like obviously starting out in New York City and then going to some sort of high fantasy realm. Like, that's cool. I'm, I'm definitely on board with that. With The Simple Wild, it was kind of like this enemies to lovers type romance, which, which worked really well for me. And I feel like we're going to have something similar with, you know, our king and then obviously pretending to be this princess. Like, that sounds like that'll be a fun time. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 25th is The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley. It seems like there are some elements of time twisting alternative history. 
So we have our main character, Joe, who has bad case of amnesia. His first memory is stepping off a train in the 19th century French colony of England. The only clue he has about his identity is this centuries-old postcard of a Scottish lighthouse that arrives in London the same month he does. Written in illegal English instead of French, the postcard is signed only with the letter M. And Joe is certain whoever wrote it knows him far better than he currently knows himself, and so he's determined to find this writer. The search for M, though, will drive Joe from French-ruled London to rebel-owned Scotland and finally onto the battleships of a lost empire's royal navy, and in the process, he will remake history and himself. So th this seems, like, super cool. It seems like we're going to have some crazy elements, but it does say that it's pitched for fans of the seven and a half, or seven, death of Evelyn Hardcastle. You know, the seven versus seven and a half depends on, you know, where, where you live. They market it differently, but I really loved that book. It had a lot of really cool elements and so I feel like this one will have this similar crazy tone of just all these cool things going on here. I'm curious about this alternative history. I definitely want to know what has happened to Joe. Why does he have amnesia? Who is he really? The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 25th is The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buellman. So this is an adult fantasy. So we have one of our main characters, Kinch, who owes the Taker's Guild a small fortune for his education as a thief, which includes, but is not limited to, lockpicking, knife fighting, wall scaling, fall breaking, lie weaving, trap making, plus a few small magics. His debt has driven him to lie in wait by the old forest road, planning to rob the next traveler that crosses his path. But today, he picked the wrong mark. Galva is a knight, a survivor of the brutal goblin wars, and handmaiden to the goddess of death. She's searching for her queen, who is missing since a distant northern city fell to giants. So he, Kinch is uh, unsuccessful in his robbery, <laughs> lucky to escape with his life. So he finds his fate entangled with Galva's. Common enemies and uncommon dangers force them on an epic journey where goblins hunger for human flesh, krakens, hunt in dark waters, and honor <laughs> is a luxury if you can afford. So I'm super excited for this. I think that sounds super cool. I am very intrigued by this whole idea of these goblin moors. It mentions we have stag-sized battle ravens. That sounds cool. Obviously, I'm totally here for all this kraken involvement. Give me that. Mm -hmm. Even the synopsis seems like there's some fun, humorous elements. So I'm curious to see if that like is true for the the book. Definitely seems like we have a team up of wildly different characters, and I'm curious to see how their partnership goes. I like that Galva is a handmaid into the goddess of death. That sounds appealing. Does she have special powers? I don't know. Definitely want to find out. Oh, there's also something about assassins who kill with deadly tattoos. I want to know what that's about. So I am so excited for this book. The next book I'll talk about that comes out May 25th is Hard Reboot by Django Wexler. So this is an adult sci-fi novella, and essentially we have giant mech battles. <laughs> so we have Kaz, who's a junior researcher on a fact-finding mission to Old Earth. But when a con artist tricks her into wagering a large sum of money belonging to her university on the outcome of a manned robot arena battle, she becomes drawn into the seedy underworld of Old Earth politics and state-sponsored battle droid prize fights. Is it time to get back to the books yet? So I do also have an arc of this, which I will be reading here pretty soon and probably will be talking about in my next weekly update. But I'm really excited about this. I've read a few of Jingle Wexler's books and have enjoyed them. So this sounded really appealing to me. I do enjoy some giant mech battles. So that sounds, you know, pretty awesome. I'm sure her university is not going to be pleased about <laughs> betting their money. It mentions intergalactic diplomacy. So I'm just really intrigued to find out what's going on here. But, so the last book I'll talk about today that comes out May 25th is The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. So this is a YA thriller, and it looks like this is set in a boarding school. Everyone knows the Ivies, the most coveted universities in the U.S. Far more important are the Ivies, the ones at Claflin Academy, that is. Five girls with the same mission, to get into the Ivy League by any means necessary. Then I guess our main character is one of them. They disrupt class ranks, club leaderships, and academic competitions, among other things. They improve their own odds by decreasing the fortunes of others. Because hyper-elite competitive college admissions is serious business, and in some cases, it's deadly. So this sounds like a fun YA thriller that definitely seems pretty cutthroat. You know, and it mentions it's like a nail-biting and timely thriller about teens who will stop at nothing to get into the college of their dreams. Too bad no, no one told them murder isn't an extracurricular. So, uh, yeah, I am totally here for a murder mystery with this boarding school. Like, that seems like the perfect setting, and I do really enjoy that. Definitely seems like our characters are going to be pretty ambitious and ruthless. So I think that this sounds like such a fun time. So those are all the books that I have to talk to you about today. Again, lots of really exciting releases this month, and like I 
I said, for the other books that I am considering, I will leave those just listed in the description. So let me know in the comments if you think you might pick up any of these books. And for your question of the day, what books that are coming out in May are you particularly excited about? So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.